Hi, I'm Carl Hose from Lincoln Electric in Cleveland, Ohio. And today we're going to be doing a little program for the Master Class Workshop for ARC Magazine. And we're going to be talking about welding aluminum alloys. And uh, what I brought here is a aluminum valve cover from the Moroso Company. Uh, we're going to talk about how we select filler metals for this particular project. Uh, very seldom is aluminum used for structural applications uh, when they're not alloyed because there's not enough strength. This is an example of an aluminum that is not alloyed. This is a 99.7% pure aluminum, which we would use for electrical conductors, and you wouldn't make a valve cover out of something this, this soft and ductile. Particular valve cover that we're going to weld on today is alloyed. It's a uh, 30-03, and there might be some 60-61 uh, bungs put in here, and also some 50-52 on the rail on the bottom. So I actually have three different alloys. The next thing we didn't need to know is what are the service conditions? Uh, what are we looking for after we're done welding? Are we looking for strength in the welded joint? Are we looking for relative freedom from cracking? Are we looking for ductility or are we going to form this part after welding? Are we looking for ductility in the weld? Are we looking for corrosion resistance in salt or fresh water? Is this part going to operate at sustained temperatures above 150 degrees Fahrenheit? And also, last but not least, is the part going to be anodized or color anodized after fabrication? Those are all things we have to look at when we select the filler metal. These alloys that we're working with here today could be welded with either one of these filler metals, uh, but we have to look at the service conditions. And let's start from the beginning. Let's, well, let's look at weldability, our freedom from hot cracking. Uh, both 4043 and 5356 would be adequate for the job we're doing. 4043 would probably get a little bit better score. Strength of the welded joint, uh, shear strength in a fillet weld, 5356 probably has a little bit better strength, but 4043 is going to be adequate for an oil pan or a, or a uh, uh, valve cover like we're working on or even a radiator or a cooler. Are we looking for corrosion resistance in salt and fresh water? Uh, we're also going to look at thermal conditions above 150 degrees, and that's critical. And there's a condition called stress corrosion cracking which takes place at this temperature. And the last thing, color match after anodizing. Are we, are we going to anodize this part to a, uh, for color to make it gold or pink or blue? Uh, we have to be careful what filler metal we use there also if that's, if that's a condition. But what's really important on this job is the thermal conditions. This part is going to operate above 150 degrees. And uh, 5356 filler metal, which could be used to join these base metals, is not suitable for this service condition. So we have to rule 5356 out. So in this case, I can jo join this with 4043. So one thing that's important is that this aluminum is clean. In this case here, just a quick wipe down with a rag would be suitable for welding on this part. Okay. Anytime we perform welding, we always want to work safe. And one of the things we got to be careful of when we're gas tungsten and arc welding or TIG welding, is you got to be careful of the UV light. And that includes uh, uh, your neck here, make sure this is covered up, t-shirt underneath your regular shirt. I'm wearing fire retardant clothing, pretty heavy cotton shirt to protect me from the UV light. Also, safety glasses on underneath your welding hood. These filter out some light, always keep them on. Uh, welding hood I have on is a, is a red line welding hood, electronic hood. Make sure you keep gloves on while you're TIG welding. Uh, this bench and all of this metal on the bench is part of the welding circuit. And if I'm holding on to a piece of metal rod and this metal rod touches my tungsten electrode, I'm going to get a shock. So it's good to have some insulation between the metal rod and my hand. So I uh, always have gloves on. These are TIG welding gloves, red line TIG gloves. All right, I'm going to be welding today with a Precision TIG 375. That's a, a pretty, pretty high amp machine, probably a little more than what I need for what I'm doing. But that's what's available today. So that's what we're going to run. I got a bottle of uh, argon back there, straight argon. Uh, I'm running my flow rate about 20 cubic feet per hour for aluminum welding. I'll be using a number 20 torch with a gas lens collet body, number 7 uh, nozzle on there. I have an intermediate back cap so I can get inside on this uh, oil pan we're working on. I have a little more access or room with that. I'm using a 330 seconds tungsten and uh, I have my machine set for TIG welding. I have my starting current set for about 14 amps. I don't think I'm going to be welding below that, but that gives me a little better start there. Uh, I have my current set on remote control, which is important with aluminum welding. That means I can vary the current as I'm going. As this piece warms up, I can back off my energy level or my amperage as I'm welding. And right now I have the top current set at 146 amps. 
balance control, I've got it set manually. I'm set almost all the way to 70% uh, negative. I back it off a little bit, maybe 65% negative, somewhere in there. Two-step control. Last thing on here is my uh, post-flow timer or after-flow timer. Uh, that's how long the argon stays on when I'm done welding. It's there to protect the tungsten and somewhat the molten metal as it solidifies. You don't need too much post-flow for aluminum, but I do need to protect my tungsten. Uh, I'm on AC polarity, alternating current, and balance control set for about 70% of the time spent on negative polarity. 65-70% uh, should be pretty good for cleaning and penetration. Got a little auxiliary ground here. It's on there for a reason. Uh, although this piece I know is destined for the scrap yard, I still am trying to display that we are trying to keep a good ground on the part. Probably wouldn't want to put it on that finished surface, but I really would not like that arcing through on a part that's been machined. In summary, it's important to find out what aluminum alloys you're going to be welding together, understand the service conditions that are, they're going to be used under, and use a filler metal manufacturer's charts uh, to correctly select filler metal based on the base metal and the service conditions. Thanks for joining us today at the Master Class Workshop.